Hey guys, my name is Terry Lewis and I'm an exercise physiologist and strength coach. And in class one with the Cystic Fibrosis Research Inc.'s online exercise class, what we talked about was the rib cage and the importance of trying to get the ribs to expand. So remember that the ribs, when you go to breathe in, they're going to go out and then they're going to tilt up. And then when you exhale, you want to come down and back. Now posture and things will, can change that over time, stress, exercise, elevated heart rates, whatever it might be, that can then change the mechanics of your rib cage. So in class one we went over the importance of breathing, okay? So the first thing we talked about is trying to breathe in as much air in through your nose as you can, slow and controlled. And then when you exhale, exhale through your mouth as if you're blowing through a straw. and then breathing in again, trying to breathe in as much air through the nose. Now, if you can't breathe in through the nose because of sinus uh, issues or anything like that, then go ahead and breathe through the mouth, but ideally try and breathe in through the nose. And when you exhale, blow through that straw. Now, think about after you blow through that straw, there's 42 candles in front of you, so you're trying to blow all the air out, so it's all in a row, 42. When you think you've gotten more in, uh, when you've got, gotten more out, try to get even more. The goal is to get more and more on exhalation. And then when you breathe in again, same thing. Get as much air in as I can. And then, and then exhale. Anywhere from three to five breaths when we're doing these exercises. So the first thing is working on the breathing patterns. That's what's going to help as we go through the series that we did in class. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the rib cage. So think about right at the edges here, this is kind of where it points out, we're going to put your hands there just subtly, okay? So when you breathe in, this will come up and you'll feel it come up. When you exhale, ideally you want it to come down. Now over time with your posture, depending on what's happening, it may stay up a little bit more than we'd like, so it'll be harder to bring the air in, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to be working on these mechanics through breath. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands right at that rib cage region. When you breathe in, since this is going to want to come up, I want you to kind of just hold it down. Don't let it come up, okay? Which is going to start to restrict your breath, and that's what we're trying to get that expansion of the rib cage, okay? And when you exhale through the mouth, tuck that rib cage down and back. So I'm pressing down and trying to tilt it back. And then I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to breathe in again. On exhalation, tucking it, getting all the air out, and even more, remember, this is where you should start to feel those abdominal muscles on exhalation, because your abdominals help bring this down together, okay? Hold that for a couple seconds, then you breathe in again. When you breathe in, since your rib cage is down and you're not allowing it to come up, it's going to really try and stretch some regions. It could be the back side of your upper back, which you're looking, you may feel the lower back, which is fine. But what we're doing is we're painting the rib cage down, so it first has to work on expanding out versus tilting up, which we get so used to do, doing when we breathe in, it's tilting up. Let's get it to expand, that allows more air to come into the lungs. All right, so what we got, breathe in. Exhale, hold there, breathe in again. Every time you exhale, tuck back more and more and keep your ribs pinned when you breathe in, okay? So that was the first stage of it. You'll start to feel the stretching around the ribs and some possibly the lower back. Now part two is where we're gonna put the feet and the hips, okay? So when you sit, sometimes our legs will go out, things will change. What happens is when our legs go out, it's going to open your hips up and allow you to do this more. So we're going to start, think about with your feet, about knee and hip width apart. We're going to try to be hip width apart here, okay? And what I want you to do is kind of feel the ground with your feet. So you should feel your heels, mid part of your foot, and then your big toe and your toes in front. Once again, you want to balance that weight out so you don't want too much on the toes or too much on the heels, okay? So from that position, line them up. And then from this thing, you can take your pelvis right here, so grab the side of your body and you're just going to kind of tuck it back. So if I have, I'm here, I'm bringing it here, I'm just tilting it back a little bit. So it's going to feel like I'm going to punch over a tap, but it's just a subtle tilt. So what we're doing is we're lining everything up for our first breath. 
Okay? So then we're going to, from this position here, we're going to go three to five breaths. I'm just going to show you from the side angle. Knees, feet, hips in line. I can feel the ground with my whole foot, not more than more heel or toes. Breathe in. Tuck the rib cage down. Get all the air out. So when you're getting breath three, four, and five in, those are the ones you're going to get the most restricted because you're already tucked, right? So it's going to be harder. So go with the choppiness. Breathe in. Try to breathe in a little bit more. Try to breathe in a little bit more. And then exhale. Get it all out. Hold for a couple seconds. Then breathe it again. The choppiness, that choppiness is going to really try to start to work the rib cage. All right? So the first couple breaths are going to get in good. But then when you're getting to three, four, and the fifth breath, you want to make, it's okay that you can't get air in. It's, it's, you're restricting your body, so don't worry about that, okay? Okay, part two, part three of this now. So we first work the breathing, then work the rib cage, we light up the hips. Now what we want to do is, if you have something ideally about two inches is all you need to make this a little bit more advanced, all we're going to do is elevate the feet now, still hip to knee width, rib cage down. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a towel, so I'll show you from this position first. Feet there, just something that you can squeeze, just a tap. You want to feel a little reference, because what we're doing is when we exhale down, our hips come in because they work with the abdominals and they cool down. So this also activates our adductors and our pelvic core, all those deep muscles of the hips. So we're going to breathe in, and when you exhale, Tuck the rib cage down, and you're just pressing into this, adding a little bit of pressure on both sides. But remember, put your feet grounded first, right? Ground your feet, fill the whole thing, squeeze this. Put your hands at the rib cage, breathe in. Exhale. And you're gonna do this for three to five breaths, right? So, from the side of you, just real quickly, knees hit, squeeze. Looking straight, what you'll want to do is tuck your neck down, keep it straight. And then you're just going to hold that position, okay? And our last one is we did a hip shift, which means we're going to get you into one hip and work on one side. So this, we work both sides up and down. Now the second one, we're kind of working side to side. It's like walking and running. Your hips your rib cage work together to get you to move the upper and lower extremities. So, what we do is think about, before I put this in here, when you're doing this position, start with your hands at the knees, right? So, what we're going to do is, we're going to start with the right, I'm going to pull back my right knee away from my hand, and I'm going to push my left knee into this hand. So, my right knee is behind my left knee, all right? So I'm kind of, it's just a subtle pull back. The feet stay where they're at, but you'll see the knee is going to be there, okay? And then I'll take, we'll go through around and then we'll shift. But from the kind of the side angle, I have hip shoulder width right there, and I'm just kind of pulling back my right knee. So they start in line, and I put my hands there, push my left in, pull back from my right hand so there's a gap. Boom. You should start to feel this on the inside of the leg. Okay? Then, you still, everything else is the same, except I pulled my right knee back, and I'm going to, first breath, I'm going to tuck the rib cage down and hold, but then on breath two, three, four, and five, I'm just focusing more on the right side. Okay? So it's going to look like this. I'm going to, the right knee's back, okay? Tuck the rib cage down both sides. And then now since my right knee's back, I'm just going to focus on the right side. Especially when you exhale, remember. Hold that position. And do that for three to five breaths. And then you would switch sides. So we're just shifting back one leg. And that's just another progression. So in class what we talked about is first and always work on the breath. Breathing in through the nose and exhaling through the mouth, trying to get as much air in, okay, and then exhale as much as you can. And when you think 
you have ex exhaled everything, try to get a little bit more because it works the abdominals. And we're trying to get the rib cage and pelvis to work more effectively and efficiently because they help with respiration and they help with all movements that we do. Okay, so once you have the breath down, then go to the ribs. Remember, breathe in, pin the rib cage down. When you exhale, tuck it back, breathe in again, and try and get more air in as you keep this down because it's going to help you expand from what we call anterior to posterior of your chest wall. We want this, this before we add this because it should go this to like this. So it's like an arc in a sense. And when you exhale, it should be the same thing. But sometimes we can get stuck. Okay? Once you've done that, we add the pelvis, put the feet up, and then integrate it. Now these are all levels of progression. So just remember, start with the breathing, and then if it, if it goes well, add to the ribs. Don't start at the far end where you're doing everything with the hip shift because you've got to let your body kind of understand what you're doing. Okay? We're retraining movement through breathing and mechanics. Okay? So at the tail end of this video, we'll have different recommendations on sets and reps to do work on breaths, but the recovery time in between is going to be different. So take your time in between because you are working your respiration, so it's going to tax your body neurologically more than actually like physically with the muscles. So kind of listen to your body. If you feel it the first time, but say the second time you don't feel it, then take a little bit longer. Sometimes we need a little bit more breaks or a little bit more recovery as the exercises or sets go on, okay? So kind of take that in and everyone's going to be different. But the best approach is when you're doing these exercises, stay consistent, okay? You know, even if it's, you only do one round of it or one set of it, try it the next day. If not, every other day. The more consistent you are, it's allowing your body to adapt and adjust and allow this to be part of your everyday routine. And this can help overall everything we're trying to accomplish. So stay tuned and for the people that are not a part of the exercise online class with us in CFRI, go to their website because we're going to be doing two more series of this in, in a few months down the road to so be able to sign up there. So stay tuned until next class as we talk more about how we're going to improve this integration.